It's been over three years, but Ghosts are back with a new album called Prequel. It's their fourth album overall, I believe, and it sees them moving into newish territory, kind of dropping a bit of their old sound, quite a bit of their old sound, to be honest. The gothic tone, the more goth side that they kind of embodied, is certainly gone and replaced with a kind of glistening, shiny, stadium, arena rock style album. Ten tracks long. It's good. Let's get, uh, get clear right off the bat. It's a good album. It does have a few flaws, though. Ashes opens the album. It's an intro, so basically really only nine tracks instead of ten tracks because Ashes is very short and just has a gothic -y group of uh, schoolgirls singing the plague song, A Ring, A Ring, A Roses, A Roses, that sort of playground tune that was associated with the plague, Black, uh, bubon the bubonic plague when I say plague. Um... And then after that, it leads straight into the single, Rats, which is a great song. You know, if, you, if you've already heard the album, if you listen to the album today, when it first came out, or you would, chances are you will have heard Rats by now. It was the first single released of it, and it's very, very much Ghost. You can really recognise it, recognize them in it, but certainly a step forward. It's catchy. It's a tune. There's no denying that. One of the best songs in the album, but certainly not the best. And the one of them actually comes next, and it's Faith. Faith is an early contender for one of the best tracks on the album, really capturing the darker tone of the older albums. If you're looking for that, you'll probably find it in Faith. You get See the Light, which has a chorus that just worms its way into your brain. It's really, really catchy. And then you get the instrumental, Mrs. Ma, which combines absolutely killer riffing with impressive synth. This is probably my favourite track on the album as of right now. Uh, originally, I thought, oh, Faith's brilliant. Faith's brilliant. But now this track, as an instrumental goes, it's really, really good. And then you get the second single, Dance Macabre, the one that kind of, I guess I wouldn't say divided people, because you either like Ghost or you don't. They're very much a Marmite kind of band. But if you didn't like them and you heard Dance Macabre, you didn't change your mind. If you did like them and you heard Dance Macabre, you may have still been on the fence and been a bit like, oh, not too sure about that. But it's catchy. It's basically Ghost version of a power ballad. And it's going to have massive crossover appeal. Let's be honest, you could play this to someone. You play Dance Macabre and probably a lot of the album to someone who doesn't like rock or metal and they'll probably say yeah that's a good song is that a good thing that's up to you i don't particularly mind ghosts want to be a huge biggest band in the world we all know if you want to be the biggest band in the world you got to have crossover appeal simple as that unfortunately after dance macabre it starts to take a few missteps pro memoria it's is a catchy song but it leans more towards the cheesy side of uh, 80s rock the 80s arena rock that you know you start start really drawing parallels with the likes of Europe and things like that. I don't know if that's a good thing. It's, again, it's not a bad song because Forge's vocals on fire here. It's probably the track that really shows his voice at its best. And it's catchy again. It's got a great keyboard melody. It's, that's the thing about this album. You can't help but keep saying, oh, it's catchy, it's catchy. But truth be told, it's going to be forgotten. This song, Pro Memoria, is going to be forgotten when it's held up against the rest of the song. It, you listen to it and you're like, that's all right, maybe your foot's tapping and so on, but when it's over, you move on to the next. It's one that you likely skip. If you're playing the album in your car or whatever and you're just playing through tracks, you'll reach up and you'll push that button and you'll skip it. And then getting a second instrumental track seems really unnecessary. I'm going to struggle to say this title, so I'll give it my best shot. It's Hell Vetus Fonster, and it's another instrumental track. Two on a nine-track album is a bit much, and it's... It pales in comparison to the other one. It's it, it's just all right. That's the best you can kind of say about it. But probably which image is the most disappointing track in the album? It's chorus aside. It just goes nowhere. You're kind of like, oh, it's got a catchy chorus and you're waiting for something. You're waiting to go, whoa. Never happens, unfortunately. But thankfully, they do end the album on an absolute high with one of the best tracks in the album, which is called Life Eternal, a powerful and affirming track. It captures the dramatic efforts the album has has tried to capture you really get it on this you know this is the big ghost this is the whew, everyone kind of thing that you get from this song it really is really good and the gothic tone is in full force here that gothic tone that you, we all love about ghost it's the track that a track that will put a smile on your face and here's the thing about the album while it doesn't always get it right it's got way more good than bad tracks like rats faith mrs ma life eternal they are brilliant brilliant tracks up there with the best ghost have ever done and proves again they're an exceptional band exceptional songwriting ability and structure in that band or at least potentially just the front man if he if he's doing it all alone and the path that the clearly on 
the, well, the path they're on is becoming more and more clear. You can kind of see where they want to go. And this, I'm not sure if this is the final sort of like push they need. It might take it might take another album, but this is certainly them going on the right path. You can certainly see the direction they want to go on. And you know, if you're not on board by now, you're not going to be after listening to this album. It's not the best Ghost album, as far as I'm concerned. It's probably my third favourite. Uh, Maloria, the last one, was brilliant, an absolute work of genius. Where this is a great album, but it's certainly no, it pales in comparison. But ultimately, the success that Ghost have got and the success that this album will bring, they deserve. You know, I'm going to say that straight away. They deserve it because this is the fourth album. It's not, it's not like they haven't been clear with the direction, the path they're taking, the act as it is. You know, I know it rubs some people up the wrong way, but what's wrong with having a little bit of dramaticness, a little bit of drama in your show? We get it in other things like Ramstein, where it's all about show as much as it's about the music, and it's the same with Ghost. There's a style to it, and this is the story they like to tell, and it's fun. It's fun, enjoyable to watch and be part of. So we'll see. We'll see what the future holds for them. But Prequel, it's a very good album. It's not the best Ghost album they've done, and it certainly won't convince anyone, anyone who's not a fan already beyond within the rock and metal genre that they're worth checking out but it certainly will have massive crossover appeal we are games brains have banger life gbhbowl.com make sure you check us out and if you like what you see and you want to see more of it hit that subscribe button thank you